Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our pre-Wednesday evening service meditation. We are going to spend the next 10 minutes just getting still, turning our attention inward, giving ourselves the gift of just being in the now moment. And so I invite you to close your eyes, to let your body relax, maybe take in a nice deep breath, and release any concerns, any thoughts about the past. And with another deep breath, As you exhale, release any concerns or thoughts about the future. And just bring your awareness to this now moment. And a tool that we use to stay anchored in the present moment is focusing on the breath. Just noticing the in-breath and the out-breath. This miracle of life that keeps recreating, reshaping itself with each and every breath. And to stay focused, you may want to silently say to yourself, breathing in, with the in-breath, breathing out with the out-breath. And if the mind wanders, which it has a tendency to do, this is an opportunity to exercise compassion and non-judgment. Just invoke that witness consciousness, just noticing that the mind has wandered off. Maybe notice that you're thinking, hearing, feeling something. And then after being aware of that, very gently and compassionately, bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
So gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, into your body temple. Just feel the weight of your body being supported on whatever you're seated right now. You might want to wiggle your toes and fingers. Take a nice deep breath. And as you feel ready, open your eyes. So once again, welcome to all of you who have joined us via Facebook Live or Zoom to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. I'm so glad you can be with us this evening. Let's join our wonderful soloist, Darius Lux, and Sam Krieger on piano in our opening chant, God is in this place. <laughs> So, let's join together in prayer. Turning our attention inward. Just feeling that part of us that every moment wants to be happy, wants to be well, seeks to experience joy, love, fulfillment. And let us recognize that that is an impulse that is felt throughout creation because that is the impulse of the one life, the one infinite invisible, all goodness, all lovingness, infinite intelligence and creativity that we call God. That, that one life is the life out of which everything comes into being and that lives in, through, around, and as all that is, including me, including each and every person gathered for this service this evening, those here in the sanctuary and all those gathered virtually. I absolutely know that God being in everything and everyone, God is absolutely present, unfolding throughout our time together, that we have come together to to honor that impulse of spirit for greater knowingness of itself in and through us. And that every part of this service supports that intention. I know that God is so present as that vibration of love through which we can feel connected. I know it is that vibration of God's love that moves through all of those who are of service this evening. It is God's love and inspiration and creativity that flows through our music ministry, through Sam and Darius. I know that I open right here, right now, to being that vessel through which 
God speaks the message that all of us, myself included, have come to hear. That this message awakens us to the truth of who we are as emanations of God. And that through every element of this service this evening, we are awakened, we are enlightened, and I know that we experience much healing and revealing together. And so in gratitude for this, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. And so now please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good evening, NoHo CRS. Hope you guys are well, staying safe out there. <clears throat> uh, this song is an original song, and it's about kind of the paradox of life. It's called The Problem Is There Is No Problem. What do you do and what do you say? Where do you work and how do you play? Where you're heading and hey, where have you been? What do you like and who do you know? What do you see and where do you go? What are you looking at and tell me now? What's looking at you? And still it's okay. Ha. Do the very best we can. It's all right. We're moving in the right direction. It's all right. Than before. Now tell me, is that all or is there more? Cause the problem is there is no problem. It's plain for all to see. Situations right and wrong depends on you and me. Problem is there is no problem. I'm gonna let it be. I don't need no drama, mama. I'd rather be happy. What do you buy and what do you sell? Who do you kiss and what do you tell? And what are you doing with your life? What do you eat and what do you think? How do you feel and what did you drink? What is wrong and somebody please tell me what is right? And still it's okay. Uh, we do the very best we can. It's all right. We're moving in the right direction. It's okay, we're doing better than before, now tell me is that all or is there more, but the problem is there is no problem, it's plain for all to see, the situation's right or wrong, depends on you and me, I said the problem is there is no problem, I'm gonna let it be. I don't need no drama, mom, I'm gonna be happy. What are we all here fighting for? Is it the right to just have more? When has enough go way too much? And when's too much till not enough? Whatever it is, it will be done. Whoever you are, you can't go wrong. Whenever it is, you realize how it is to be surprised that the problem there is no problem, it's plain for all to see, situations right and wrong, depends on you and me, problem is there is no problem, I'm gonna let it be, I don't need no drama, mom, I'm gonna be happy, because the problem is there is no problem, it's plain for all to see, 
situations are right and wrong. The pills are you and me. So the problem is there is no problem. I'm gonna let it be. Huh. I don't need no drama, mom. I'm gonna be happy. No problem. Thank you, Darius. <laughs> Why am I looking? <laughs> so the problem actually, Darius, is that you've told everyone that there is no problem, therefore there is no reason for me to be here. So <laughs> I see that as a problem. <laughs> Thank you, that was perfect. So good evening. I'm looking at this idea of 2020 hindsight playing on the idea that we just stepped out of the year 2020. And the old saying that hindsight is 2020, which I'm sure you've probably all heard that, but uh, refers to the idea that um, the measurement for perfect vision is 2020 and that we can often see things more clearly more objectively, we can see how we could have done, done things differently when we look back in time. And I think the expression is often used when people are expressing blame, shame, frustration, regret, anger over something that didn't work out well. And as they look back, they realize that they could have handled it differently or it could have been handled differently. I mean, it could be you know, something as simple as, well, if I just you know, looked at the directions first, you know, I might not have spent three hours trying to put this thing together, not anything that I can think of that happened to me recently. Um, or you know, if I'd been willing to listen, maybe this relationship wouldn't have gone sour. You know, it could be anything from something that we might consider somewhat incidental to something really, really big. But whether we're looking at the past um, in ways that had small or large impacts on our lives, it's true that looking back after the fact gives us a perspective where we can recognize possibly where things went awry, you know, when something went wrong. And because this is done very often with this attitude of blame or shame, with this you know, sense of frustration or anger, the expression is often used to soothe. You know, to soothe people, say, you know, hey, look, you know, hindsight is 2020. You know, now you can see things objectively, but you know, at the time, you didn't know any better, or we didn't know any better, or they didn't know any better. So you know, it's often used as a means of reminding ourselves that there's no use beating ourselves up for mistakes or transgressions of the past. You know, let's move forward. And when it comes to the year 2020, I think many of us are ready to just put it behind us and not look back and just move forward. Am I right? Can anyone relate to that? <laughs> I actually am looking for the suggestion box. If anyone knows where it is, I, I haven't found it, but where I can put in my suggestion uh, I want them to add a quote to the New Testament to put a little addendum. And uh, the quote would be in the book of Matthew, and it would be, get thee behind me, 2020. Perfectly in alignment with Jesus' quote, get thee behind me, Satan, don't you think? But let's face it, looking back at the past in and of itself isn't a bad thing. You know, so much of what we've learned and ways that we've grown and evolved have been from learning from the past. It's not the action, but it's the consciousness that we bring to it when we are looking back, when we are exercising hindsight. 
Certainly we don't want to bring the consciousness of pining over the past, berating ourselves and others for our errors and transgressions, rehashing hurts over and over again. You know, that only causes us to stay stuck in the past. Or actually, more accurately, um, what it's doing is that we are projecting something from the past onto the current moment. So we are re-experiencing things from the past that we may not want to have experienced ever. If, however, we bring the consciousness of, what can I learn from the past? What have I gained from the past? How can I look back and reflect on this that helps me make for a better today and tomorrow? Then we're actually doing what metaphysician Emmett Fox encouraged us to do when he said, you know, rather than focusing on the problem, focus on God instead. We're directing our attention away from the past, from the problems, and we're focusing on God in the sense that we are focusing on the potential to call forth God's goodness to make good of what has been. And that's, to me, the wisdom of the saying, hindsight is twenty twenty. in that sometimes when you look back at a situation, you can see it from a perspective that allows you to learn to evolve and to grow from it and to create a greater good from what you've learned. So for my first talk of 2021, you know, I have two defaults that I go to in my sermons. It's either going to be France or my corporate experience. Well, tonight's corporate experience. <laughs> so I, I worked in... Um, what was called the, uh, well, we were in the brokerage industry. We were an information provider to the brokerage industry, which is a very, very fast-paced industry. I worked in a centralized customer service help desk and also in order fulfillment. Problems would arise that affected people all around the country. If one of our data centers went down or if something happened, it could cause a mass outage and when stockbrokers don't have access to their data, it can have a major impact on their ability to do their work and put them in a very bad light with their clients. So needless to say, my staff in those moments would be under a lot of pressure. And it wasn't just my staff, but our whole company. And there were times that things would happen, and everyone was just scrambling. The, the whole thing was, get this back up and running. Doesn't matter how, just get things back up and running. But after a major challenge arose and we got through it, we would meet for what we would refer to as a post-mortem, which I know sounds a little bit gloomy. I didn't realize it wasn't a really common term until I used it recently after something went wrong in our HOA association. I suggested we have a post-mortem and everyone was like, what? <laughs> We're gonna, you know. <laughs> take a dead body and do something? No, it, it was that we would just basically look at what happened and analyze it and see you know, what we could do differently. Now, I have what I could say, there were two corporate experiences that I had. Um, there was my before the company that took us over for the last 10 years of my corporate experience, and there was the after. The before, was a lot of fear-based uh, intimidation type of management going on. And when we would get together for those kind of post-mortem meetings, there was a lot of finger pointing, there was a lot of shaming and blaming, and really, yes, maybe we figured out what we would do differently the next time, but it only left people feeling discouraged it created even more fear. It made people fearful of making mistakes or admitting to mistakes. Did not, um, you know, it did not promote a healthy work environment. Version two, after we were taken over by the new organization, 
the postmortems where we went into the meetings with this idea of, okay, we're going to learn from this. Let's see what we'd want to do differently. So right off the bat, there was a recognition of a potential for something greater to happen that, you know, we did our best, but how are we going to make, if, if we're confronted with a situation like this next time, how will we handle it more easily and smoothly? And, and this, this is the part I would like to emphasize the most, because I think it was so important and so valuable. Each and every time we met for one of those kinds of meetings, there was a, um, an acknowledgement of the things that people, that those of us who were in the crisis moment and did whatever we could to make things work, to acknowledge the good things that were done, to acknowledge how people pulled together and did what had to be done and to see the creativity. And it was, there was a sense of, okay, so we know we've got that kind of energy. We know we've got this kind of team spirit. Let's take that, let's take the knowledge of what we've learned and let's bring that forward. So even though it wasn't languaged in a spiritual way, what, what we were really doing when we were acknowledging the good is we were acknowledging that God, good, was there in the midst, right in the midst of the problem. Isn't that what we teach in this teaching? That if we want to have a more exper expansive experience of God, is that we need to sense God's presence in all things, all the time. The more we can do that, the more we're going to call forth and experience God's nature in our lives. So in applying these teachings to you know, reflecting, to hindsight, and reflecting back on 2020, I really believe we should be looking for all the ways that God was present in the midst of the huge, huge human challenges that we faced. You know, so it's not to minimize the challenges at all, but in light of this global pandemic that spread so quickly and caused so many to make enormous changes to their lives and routines, some some very difficult ones that people are still struggling with today. You know, I acknowledge that. But I'm still, I am just in awe. I'm in absolute awe of the, the demonstrations of resiliency, adaptability, creativity. You know, the ways people who were technology resistance or resistant or challenged managed to break through those barriers to take advantage of the technology we have today to stay connected or to stay in business. You know, I, I have to talk about our own experience here at church. I mean, I think you've heard our board president, Blair, who's with us tonight, and I talked many times about, you know, just this amazing collaboration that we got to experience uh, during this time. I, I'm just, you know, so touched when I reflect on those right now you know, the fact that we are doing this on Zoom and Facebook Live. Let me tell you folks, some of the people that are supporting us in doing this were not tech savvy. Thank God we had some, like Blair's son Alex, folks like Dean and Mark who are very quick to pick up um, technology that, you know, were right there to help out. But I tell you, there were any number who had to spend hours and hours and hours to learn what you know what to do to be able to support us i mean talk about a demonstration of love and commitment and um dedication and the hours and hours and hours of those who had that technical expertise to spend with those who were willing to learn let's look at how much collaboration in the midst of the challenge the joy of coming together 
to collaborate and find solutions. I know we experienced it, and I'm not going to say we were always just like, oh, is this fun? No. <laughs> But when we, when we really look back on it, I know all of us can feel a level of joy and fulfillment and love that we all got to share in the midst of the challenges. I mean, it, Dr. Mark leaving at one point, coming back to a church that, you know, for over 30 years, he's been here, and all of a sudden, it's like church is looking into a camera and just, okay, that's the way we're doing church. You know, that's... It's amazing to me, the adaptability and the willingness to, if this is the way we're doing it, we're going forward. How about the countless examples of people that we've heard of in the midst of their own challenges who have stopped to reach out and to support someone else who's less fortunate? Isn't that an example of God's love? In the midst of horrifying and we're not going to deny it, horrifying examples of racial inequity and injustice. Look at all the discussions, the educational programs, the different things that have come forth to heal, to say, okay, we know this isn't right. Let's, what do we have to do to heal this? And people, you know, finding ways to, to, to do that. In the midst of the examples, and I know we're experiencing a lot of it right now, of dividedness, I personally can tell you of so many family and friends, you know, being in this business, I get to hear from people who have talked about ways that they have learned to stay connected to their loved ones, despite their very, very divergent views that cause a lot of conflict and discord, that they found ways Initially, sometimes, it's just, let's not talk about that so we can just focus on the things that we have in common and love. But out of that, I've heard of some people that are now learning that they can talk about it, but they need to talk a little bit differently and be a little bit more respectful. You know, this isn't about minimizing the human challenges that we've undergone or that we're facing. It's about expanding or maximizing our idea of God's nature being greater than any of the challenges and always being available to us. So certainly, as we look back, we're going to be able to acknowledge any number of errors, ways we could have handled things better. We'll continue to do so as time goes on. But again, if we do so with a perspective that there's a greater presence of God. There's this great, greater presence of good in us than all the mistakes, the hardships, the transgressions. And if we acknowledge how even in the midst of the darkest moments, there were examples of how God was right there, that God's nature was there to be called forth. Then we come out of 2020 with greater human wisdom and a deeper sense of the divine within and around us always. And that, I believe, is the consciousness that we want to bring into 2021. So I'm going to invite you to turn your attention inward for a moment. And reflecting on this past year, Choose one thing that you feel could have been handled better. I know probably a whole list will come up, but just choose one thing that really speaks to you that could have been handled better that you would like to see changed going forward. Whether it's something in your life or the world at large. And ask yourself, what quality of God do you feel would have been more fully expressed or that you'd like to see more fully expressed going forward? Greater love, greater compassion, greater collaboration, health, whatever. And whatever that quality is, try to call to mind 
any way that this quality of God was expressed through you, around you, despite the problem. And imagine that quality of God being more fully realized in the way that you'd like it to be going forward. Recognize that you're aligning with that quality of God within you that's in all beings. And you're calling it forth into greater expression. So allow yourself to acknowledge and affirm that 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 quality of God has always been within and around you and is there to point the way to a greater manifestation of itself going forward. And from this place in consciousness, please join me in knowing the truth of how that one life of God truly is the one life, the only true power in, through, and as all that is. It is that essence of God that animates my being and the being of every individual, every part of creation. And so knowing this, let us know together right here, right now, that that nature of God is changeless, birthless, deathless, it is ever present to be experienced. So wherever there is any experience going on of resistance or suffering due to change, it could be anything in this human dimension of change in work, change in a relationship. It could be the change of people passing on from this life into the next. Let us remember the truth that that one nature of God is a nature that will always be there, in which we are always interconnected in this life and beyond, and that we always have it to turn to, to experience it in a new way as things change humanly. Let us remember that that nature of God is perfect, whole, and complete. It is a vibration of health, so that wherever there is an experience of dis-ease or discord, as we know this truth, that vibration of health and wholeness emerges, shows up as that well-being that is there for each and every one of us to experience in every moment. Let us further remember that that nature of God is infinitely creative, and God is always seeking to give of itself unto itself through us. And so every being contains within them certain gifts of God to share with the world. And as we know this truth, those who may feel that they are not in their right place are guided to their perfect right place to express those talents, to feel loved and appreciated and compensated for the gifts that they possess, that are the gifts of God. Let us absolutely know that that nature of God is limitless. And so where there's any experience of lack or limitation, it is simply a human idea being imposed on the infinity of God. And as we know the truth, that this nature of God is an infinite giver and receiver, we see an expansion, an expansion in the ability to give and receive love, to be creative and absolutely celebrate the creativity all around, to experience all needs met and generosity in giving back to life. And absolutely let us remember that the core nature of God is love. And that as we align with that vibration of love, forgiveness comes forth, compassion comes forth. We enter into a greater expression of love for ourselves, beings everywhere, life itself. And let us follow that vibration of love that is always for greater good by setting our own intentions for greater good in silence. And 
So whatever these intentions may be, whether it's for greater good for ourselves, loved ones, situations in the world, let us know that we are feeling the impulse of God for a greater realization of itself. And as we know that God is in all these situations, God good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams. We give thanks for this absolute blessing of being able to come together in this community and in absolute joy knowing that all paths lead to the same God, the same truth. I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is, and together we say, Amen.